and we'll give you a status of the, uh, how we are, where we are today and some of the challenges we are facing at the moment. For, first of all, everybody knows that uh, more and more hardware <coughs> manufacturers are investing in R&D when it comes to hydrogen and fuel cell driven models. Daimler, Toyota, Honda, and GM, uh, Kia, Mazda, and more to come. Uh, first of all, fuel cell and hydrogen. When we're talking about it, I noticed that a lot of people still don't, they think that the, you use the hydrogen as, a, as you use diesel or petrol. <coughs> what we're using the hydrogen from the tanks is to, uh, to do an electrolysis on, on board in, in the car to make electricity, which drives the car the same way as a traditional electric car. It's important to everybody now know that. And the major benefit with fuel cell cars is that they have, they can be larger and that they can be driven much longer with a higher range than a traditional electric car. Today you can drive an electric car uh, 150 kilometers in the uh, summertime, uh, dramatically reduced in winter time when it's minus 25. With fuel cell down to minus 25, you can drive up till 400 kilometers with B class fuel cell. And that in Norway, looking at the, the country in, 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 uh, in general, we see that a car that can take us a long range, not only to drive in the city, is a major benefit compared to the electric cars. And the electric cars will, of course, have the future. They are already here. And Daimler and Mercedes-Benz do also have electric cars. So it's not a competition. But it's just to make the bodies the difference between a fuel cell and a, an electric car. And Daimler chose Norway. And the, the reasons uh, were quite clear. We have a very good incentive system. Uh, no tax, no VAT. And also driving in the taxi lane, as Mr. Everton told us, it's obviously a very clear benefit when you're living in the suburban areas of Oslo. Very easy to avoid the, the stau, as they say in Germany. And it was not easy because we had to really discuss, because obviously Norway is not the biggest market in the world for, for cars, but due to this incentive system from the authorities, that was the main, main reason that we actually, in the end, convinced Daimler to invest in uh, these 10 B-classes to Norway, to make Norway as a pilot country, to see how this, together with Germany and the US. So at the moment, we are now renting 10 cars, and we will have them here for three years. Uh, we have had some challenges, because the cars have been parked for approximately three months due to problems with the St Statoil Ökern station. Uh, the guys with the Statoil and, uh, and Daimler work very well together and uh, until recently uh, we got it approved by Daimler. So now the station at Erken is up and running and also yesterday, as many of you know, the station at Gausta, the h 2 move station, was open, very uh, close to Sintef. So now we have two, uh, two uh, fueling stations in Oslo running. And Drammen was also operational and approved at the same time as Toto. So now we have Drammen, the Gausta station, and Öken up and running. So that's very good, and it's a, it's a must if you have these 10 cars. Without fuel, they will not run. And it has been a challenging road to this, uh, to this moment. The cooperation with the, the involved people from Stockholm and, and Daimler was very good, as I stated. But of course, it was a hard stroke when the top management of Stockholm decided to, to leave this business from a strategic point of view. Uh, so now, uh, we are working for a solution to, to fund and keep these stations up and running without Stockholm. Daimler is trying to help and support us, of course. But the, as I said, this is not our job. We haven't produced the cars. We haven't worked together with Stockholm. Now you have to find a solution in Norway, on your, more or less on your own. But still, they have given it, uh, us a lot of support. They, of course, mean that Norway should put more resources into hydrogen so that we can stay uh, ahead and become a more important uh, reference test market. And because more and more manufacturers will bring hydrogen cars to the market for the reasons I stated in the beginning. And of course, today's uh, fueling stations must be retained and, and more need to be installed because we need a predictability and we need, uh, let's say, 
when you're renting a car, you need to know that you have stations that are able to fill your car. Because else it's, it's hopeless. And uh, if you do not find a solution, in wor the worst case scenario for the 10 vehicle fuel cells is to return them to Germany. That would be a really sad story. But that is the worst case scenario. We do not believe that we, that will be the fact. It, uh, that's the worst case scenario that we have to avoid. And that is the cooperation between the national authorities, local authorities, and also uh, maybe also private investors. And because everything is, the, the, the most important thing is that we have to prepare for the future and we have to find a way to bridge to the future. When we have these hydrogen cars coming to, to Norway, everybody, uh, uh, both Hyundai <coughs> and Daimler and also Toyota are now talking about bringing cars to Norway 2014, 2015. We're talking two, three years from now, and then we really will see not only thousands of electric cars, but I'm, I'm quite convinced that we'll be seeing thousands of hydrogen cars due to the benefits of this hydrogen fuel cell technology. And also, on longer term, we have to invest also in other four or five big cities around in, uh, in, in Norway, not to make it only an Oslo case. Uh, the number of stations can be discussed. There are several uh, numbers up and running. But we do not, in the beginning, need so many stations. So it's not, uh, it should not be so expensive to, let's say, invest from the authorities in this right number of stations to keep, uh, to have an infrastructure so you can drive more or less, at least from Trondheim and Samsung across the country. And of course, as Ulla Edelstein told us, we really need this incentive system from the national authorities, the tax incentives, the tax land incentives for more than one or two or three years more. Because if you take away the incentives today, it will kill this project. And it will also kill the, the, the future for the electric cars. They need this predictability for the next, I would, I think 10 years is a good uh, estimate. So we know, because now as a car reporter, every year we start wondering what will happen in the next budget. And it's really stressful to not have that predictability that we, that we need. <coughs> so I think that was uh, more or less it, and that's the future. It's the new S-Class, or the next new S-Class coming up in, in uh, 10 to 12 years time, driven on uh, fu uh, fuel cell technology. <coughs> so it's ju just to stand in line to order. <laughs> 20, 25 is the delivery time. <laughs> Thank you for your attention.